I was born in Leipzig on the 22nd day of May, 1813, in a room on the second floor of the Red and White Lion. And two days later was baptized at St. Thomas Church and christened Wilhelm Richard Wagner. From Richard Wagner's autobiography begins the story of a man who, although he was far from being a model of behavior, became one of the world's universal geniuses. For Richard Wagner was not only a composer, but one of the finest conductors of all time, a great poet, a marvelous architect, a philosopher, a theatrical reformer, and one of the great revolutionists of art and music. Wagner seemed to be set by troubles. When he was born, the hordes of Napoleon held Leipzig, and a great war was raging. Little Richard was scarcely six months old when his father, who was a minor city official, died and left his mother to care for Richard, his sisters, and his brothers. It wasn't long until Wagner's mother was married again to Ludwig Geyer, an actor. Richard grew to be very fond of his stepfather, who was to give him a fine understanding of the theater. By this time, the family had moved to Dresden, one of Germany's great centers of art and theater. casually interested in music. To be sure, he grew to know and love the then revolutionary operas of Carl Maria von Weber. In fact, he met the composer at his stepfather's home numerous times. But it was theater that Richard was interested in. None of his family was interested in music. Why should he be? He learned to play the piano, but never very well. He managed to get into a good deal of mischief. His stepfather, who called Richard the Cossack because he was so wild, wrote, Richard left a trouser seat per day on our hedge, but poor friendly Geyer was soon very ill and taken to bed. He lay there one night, listening to Richard banging away at a Weber aria in the next room. Do you think it is possible that the boy has musical talent? He asked his wife. The next day, he was dead, and Richard's mother needed all the help she could muster to keep the family together. The other children, all older than Richard, went into the theater. Richard went to school, and in some subjects at least, did very well. At the age of 13, he was able to translate Greek with great ease. Music? No, not yet. Of all the great composers of the world, Wagner started latest. He was still interested in the theater, and was writing a play, a melodrama, in fact, in which he confesses he killed off no less than 42 characters but had to bring them back as ghosts or the play would have ended for lack of actors. The family, what was left of it, moved back to Leipzig and it was there at one of the famed concerts of the Gewandhaus Orchestra that Wagner was to receive his most lasting impression. Beethoven had just died, 
and incredibly enough, Richard had never heard any of his symphonies. When the great orchestra ceased playing, Wagner knew what he must be. Here are his own words. I only remember that one evening I heard a symphony of Beethoven's for the first time, that it set me in a fever, and on my recovery, I had become a musician. Wagner had a one-track mind. Just as firmly as he was going to be a man of the theater before, now, just as firmly, he was going to be a composer. Nothing was going to stop him. No one would hinder him. He would do anything, lie, cheat, steal, to become a great musician. He was to do all of these things. He was to wound his friends, steal from them, hurt them cruelly. But there can be no question of it. He became a great composer. His first music teacher was bad, or anyhow, bad for Richard. His second, Theodore Weinlig, saw immediately that this was no ordinary pupil. To begin with, he was just starting to study music at 16. He had, even then, strangest ideas regarding a revolution of opera. Weinlig told the headstrong boy that to upset the rules, you first had to learn them. Learn to write a fugue. Maybe you'll find it helpful. Richard heeded his advice. He would copy the scores of Beethoven's symphonies or write forehand piano arrangements of them, just for practice. In no time at all, even Weinlig was satisfied. He wrote a symphony and a couple of overtures, all rather poor music, I'm sorry to say. He was a political revolutionary, although his knowledge of politics was nil. He traveled to Vienna for a vacation, which one imagines his mother could ill afford. On his return, he promptly began work on his first opera, The Fairies, in frank imitation of Weber. Here is part of the overture. Although the opera was not performed, the overture was, and was a big success. Wagner was then 21 years old. There was never any question, really. Symphonies were all very well, but Beethoven had written the great symphonies. Now Wagner felt destined to write operas, operas on a scale that no one had ever before conceived. His next was to be adapted from Shakespeare's Measure for Measure and was called Love is Forbidden. It was performed, but it was not a success. In 1834, Wagner turned to conducting 
and was appointed conductor in the town of Magdeburg. No sooner had he done that than the Wagner family was introduced to the young lady who was to be Wagner's wife, Minna. This lovely young woman probably never understood Wagner, if indeed anyone understood him. She was to share his humble home, for Wagner was to learn what it was to be poor and suffer much from him before she died. Wagner was rightly dissatisfied with the opera and the operatic productions he had seen. He knew that he could do better than anyone of his day. Money, though, was a pressing problem. To write opera, you needed money, peace, and quiet. He was given a chance as conductor of the Riga Opera House, and he took it. But soon, due to his extravagances, he was forced to flee just one step ahead of his creditors. He took with him the libretto for the new opera he was writing called Rienzi. important work. It was styled in heroic proportions. Thousands in the cast, great choruses, fine arias. Although it was not to make the composer much money, it was to gain a good reputation for him. He took a long trip to Paris by sea, and there he met Meyerbeer, a famous German composer of the day, who tried to help the impatient young man. But disaster plagued his steps. His money gave out. He did anything for a living, even arranging opera arias for trumpet. A theater, which might have produced Rienzi, went bankrupt. But no matter what the disaster, Wagner worked day and night. He had an idea for another opera, The Flying Dutchman. comes to port was merely an idea on paper, and he hastened to sell it to an opera impresario. Was the impresario interested? Yes, he was, very interested. Well then, Wagner would start to work on the libretto and music. Oh no, that was not what the impresario had in mind. He wanted no scatterbrained German to write music for his theater. All he liked was the story. Another composer would write the music. If Wagner hadn't desperately needed the money, he probably would have struck the man. As it was, he accepted the offered money and started to work on the music himself. <laughs>
seemed to turn somewhat, Dresden accepted Rienzi for performance. Despite delays, it was finally produced with success on October 24th, 1842. Then, in January of the next year, The Flying Dutchman was produced. It was a failure, as it was too radical a work for the public. For it was here that Wagner began his revolution. Gone were arias, choruses, duets. The work was one vast experience without separate parts. The music flowed from beginning to end. It was a great work, but no one liked it. Well, almost no one, for Franz Liszt heard it and was much impressed. Spohr, a celebrated conductor, wrote Wagner a letter of great praise and produced the opera himself. Wagner was again at work on Tannhäuser, a story based on a medieval legend. As usual, Wagner himself wrote the book. In 1845, it had its debut. It was an even more outstanding work than The Flying Dutchman, and consequently, even more of a failure. Meanwhile, Wagner had been appointed conductor of the Dresden Opera, and began to train the orchestra according to his ideas, which were very strict. Despite opposition, the orchestra was soon a well-trained group. <laughs> 